Even with the best camera and lens, to look your best in video content, there are many factors to keep in mind. In this video, we're gonna provide strategies for proper lighting, set design, and your own personal presentation to make sure you get the best quality video. The first step is proper lighting. Even if you have zero budget, there are some tricks to use in a home office that can make a big difference. The goal is to have soft, even lighting on your face and the products if you're doing some B-roll. Let's say you have no lights and no budget to purchase any lights. You probably have a window wherever you're recording. And so I would suggest facing the window, the camera would be pointed away from the window at you, you are facing the window. Typically that would be a harsh light, but what you can do is actually throw a sheet or some kind of white material over the window and that white sheet is actually gonna diffuse the light somewhat. Now you will have to deal with inconsistencies. If a cloud passes over, it could get dark for a moment, but that setup is better than nothing and it should provide some soft and even lighting. You can even put double sheets on the window to make it even more soft and more even. And you definitely wanna roll whatever blinds you have up so you don't get lines of light on your face as you record. Now let's say you have budget to get just one light. If you're gonna have one light for your filming, you could get a ring light. Those are pretty inexpensive on Amazon and they can do okay, although they would be a little harsh. You can again, throw a sheet or some kind of white material over a ring light to soften it. But if you're gonna get just one light, I would actually suggest the Elgato Key Light Air. You can get it for around $150 depending on what sales are going on. It connects to Wi-Fi so you can adjust the color temperature and the brightness wirelessly using the Elgato app. And it kind of has a built-in diffuser. And so if you place it kind of a good distance away from you, you can put it on your desk. It comes with a nice stand. You can angle it pretty easily. That should provide better than nothing light. If you get two of them and you can have two facing your face from either side, that would be even better. Now, if you have the budget to do a three-point lighting setup, this is typically what you want to do in a professional studio environment. A three-point lighting setup includes a key light or your main light, a fill light, usually off to the side, and a hair light that's coming from the back. I'm gonna show you what each of those look like individually. But typically, your key light will be the largest, the main source of light, and you again want a soft, even lighting. I use an Aperture Amran 200X actual light with a light dome too. That's those big domes you might see from YouTubers, and it softens the light. Now for my fill and key light, I actually use those Elgato Key Light Airs. Those were in my previous setup and I repurposed them for key and fill. So let me show you what each light does individually. So this is actually just with the hair light on. You'll see it's just lighting up my head ever so slightly. If I could, I would actually get a more focused light for my hair light so it just gets the back of my head and not the wall at all. But this is what a hair light is supposed to do. This is now my hair and fill light. The fill light comes from the side and it fills the side of my face that the main key light is not getting. Again, the fill light is not very bright. It's really just to lighten up that one side of your face and you can raise or lower that as you want. And see now that key light is on and it provides that nice soft light everywhere. I'm matching the color temperature and properly white balanced my camera so everything looks like it's supposed to. It's not too blue or too red. We'll leave some links in the video description to lights that might work for your setup. Now let's talk about decor or background. You may not have a full set behind you, but you can still create visual interest without distracting your viewers that's pleasing to watch. The first thing you can do is a green screen. You can actually get pretty inexpensive green screens with the stands, like on Amazon, we'll put links in the video description. And a green screen, then you can make the background whatever you want. Again, it will be a fairly flat background because the screen is literally flat. But there's also some challenges when using a green screen. You really need even lighting on the green screen because if some parts are darker than others, when you key out the green screen later in your video editing software, it might not get the entire green screen. You might have to adjust it and then you might start looking a little weird. I would not be able to wear this shirt on a green screen either because any green clothing or objects will disappear once you key it out. If you don't have a set or a green screen, you can just use a solid color background. Lots of YouTubers use this. You can see some of iJustine and other videos where it's just plain white background or a plain black or dark gray background. So if you just have a solid color wall, that's fine too. Then you can really stand out as the subject. A solid background is also good for overlays if you're wanting to use text on screen or talk about a product to illustrate points. Now, if you're gonna build a set or you have some budget to make a decor, bookshelves are a great option. I have a kind of bookshelf behind me, got that from Amazon, again, pretty inexpensive. And then you can put interesting things on a bookshelf to create that visual interest, whether it's technology boxes or just straight up books or anything that relates to the content that you're making. You can also hang decor on walls, whether that's art or other things related to your subject. You can also use fun objects that create visual interest, like my RSS pillow. You can have that in the background while you film. And two recommendations if you wanna check out some YouTube channels that talk about their sets and setup. Becky and Chris on YouTube are a great resource. They talk about multiple sets. They have a video podcast set, 
plus multiple video filming for A-roll and B-roll. We'll link to their channel in the video description. Peter McKinnon also just moved to a new studio as you record, so we'll link to that video and you can check out how he and others set up their filming decor. Now let's talk about your personal presentation on camera. Now that you have proper lighting and a visually pleasing backdrop, it's time to get in front of the camera. And if you have the option to have a second person check your hair and clothing for distractions, maybe large pieces of lint on your clothing or broccoli in your teeth, not only do you want to limit distractions, but being in focus as you record is critical. If you have a camera where you really trust the autofocus to focus on your face, that's great. But if you're doing manual focus or you're not sure what your camera's doing, again, that second set of eyes is really helpful. But if you don't have a second set of eyes, the next best thing is to have a large monitor that's previewing what the camera sees so you can see it while you're in front of the camera. I actually have a large monitor right behind the camera and I'm seeing a live preview of what the camera sees. I'm going HDMI out of my camera into that monitor and that large monitor will hopefully show me anything that I should change before I hit record. I actually use a 27 inch HDMI monitor. It's only 1080p, so it can be pretty inexpensive. You can be in that one to $200 range to get some kind of live preview monitor. Or you can also get a five to seven inch monitor that will mount on the camera that you're using. You can mount it to the camera itself or a small rig. If none of those options are available to you, record a short clip of yourself, just a few seconds before you jump into your full video recording. Just do a test. You could say test one, two, three or something else and then watch that video back, maybe on your computer or get really close to the camera screen so you can preview it. And this way you can see, make sure everything looks good, both in the background and on your person as you record. So again, just some things to double check. Hair, beard, if applicable, glasses, reflections or smudges that might be on the glasses, clothing, teeth, anything off in the background. And if you're doing some B-roll of product devices like a phone, a tablet or something else with a screen, it might be a good idea to actually clean that screen before you start recording. You probably used that device recently and there might be fingerprints or smudges and those are gonna get on as you record, but it's nice to start with a clean slate from the first time your viewers see it on video. Now that you have everything set and you're about to press record, here are some suggestions for actually being on camera. As much as you can, make eye contact with the lens. Again, depending on your camera, that might be off to the side, like if you're using an iPad or if you're using a large mirrorless camera, try to stay right down the lens. Your viewers are gonna feel like you are talking to them when you're making that eye contact. If you're doing lengthy tutorials, it might be good to actually have a picture in picture of your face as you talk about something on screen or even the devices. Again, use your discretion, how long you're doing the tutorial for, or how long that clip is. And then even in those situations, try to make eye contact with the camera so your picture in picture video is still engaging to your viewer. When it comes to posture, it will help your viewers if you're kind of leaning in, almost really engaging with your viewer. Facial expressions and smiling is always good for engagement and hand movements because again, it kind of develops that trust and engagement with your viewer as you're talking about something, whatever the topic may be. So those are some tips from lighting, decor, and presenting on camera so you make sure you look your best. Subscribe to the Riverside channel and hit that bell icon. We've got lots of tutorials and tips for podcasting, creating video content, and even advanced workflows for post-production. Hit the like button and drop a comment below if you have a question about this or anything else you'd like to learn about on the Riverside channel. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.